Hello and welcome to another episode of the Full Force Weekly, brought to you by General Joe's Reborn.com, with me as your host, Christopher McLeod, aka Diagnostic80. For today's episode, I'm all on my own. In this regular video series, I round up all the week's news in the world of G.I. Joe. What is it, me? Yeah, I played the wrong video. Uh, I'll just say it anyway. It's the Full Force <laughs> Weekly. That was, I was just a bait and switch. I was just making them think, oh, you're on your own again. And then I just dropped Pat in there like like they're amazing, amazing stuff. How you doing, buddy? Doing okay. <laughs> yeah, apparently my camera still wasn't centered either. That's uh, you're amazing. You're on your own. Uh, do you know what I'm going to do? What's that? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Full Force Weekly, brought to you by Generals Joe's Reborn.com with me as your host, Christopher McLeod, aka Diagnostic80. For today's episode, I'm joined by the awesome Patrick Not Picard Stewart. In this regular video series, we round up all the week's news in the world of G.I. Joe. What is it, Pat? It's the Full Force Weekly. <laughs> See, I paused because I thought maybe you would say it this time. <laughs> no. Oh my goodness, what a great start to the morning. Late, we were in late. I don't even know how that happened because we had plenty of time and we were just talking and getting prepped. And then it's like, oh, it's way past 10. And then we go in and I play the wrong video and then Pat wasn't centered. And then I, it, just amazing start, amazing start. How's it going, buddy? It's it's going better now. We're all on, we're all on course. <laughs> it's like we've course corrected. Um, and yeah, who? I mean, I tell you what, the full force come here if you want two intros. Is all I'm saying. Uh, we're the, definitely the place for that. Uh, lots of stuff to talk about this week. We've got comics news. We've got kind of insider Hasbro news. We've got classified stuff to get into. It's, it's quite a lot going on this week, Pat. Yeah, and around here it's just rain. That's all. That's most of what we have. That's all you rain. have. It's miserable. It was it was horrible yesterday. Actually, here it, I mean, it absolutely threw, it hailed at one point, and I thought the whole roof was going to cave in. It was yeah. It, I, I want I want the I want the summer already. Please, can we get s summer in in the house? And then it'll be too hot, obviously. So that's true. That's true. Anyway, uh, yeah, lots to get into. We'll start then with comics and uh, a little bit of Skybound for you. <laughs> Da, 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 da. Anyway, Skybound and Image Comics, in collaboration with Hasbro, announced the upcoming full release of G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero Compendium Volume 1, which will collect issues 1 to 50 of the original Marvel comic series for the iconic franchise in a new reader-friendly compendium format for the very first time. The first volume hits comic book shops on October the 2nd, 2024 for $64.99 and features a brand new cover by Andy Kubert. In addition, an image has been shared of the upcoming free comic book day Energon Universe G.I. Joe issue written by Joshua Williamson, art by Jason Howard and colours by Mike Spicer, which we'll get into in a second. The issue will be available to pick up at local comic stores on Saturday the 4th of May. And if you missed that, have no fear because an Energon Universe special will be made available with multiple variant covers that contain the same content for purchase after the fact. There are two Joe variant covers, including a Baroness cover by Tom Riley and a Flint and Jay cover by Stephen Green, which again, we will go through in a moment. But first, Pat, let's talk compendium news. Um, excited for this one, even though you've read this comic probably about 50 billion times? Um, this is the Marvel run, right? This Correct. Is here. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, kind of. I mean... I think that it's good to get this out there and for people to have the opportunity to reread these. I don't know if I'll be picking this up, though, because, I mean, I have the original run. Maybe I should just because I, I do feel bad breaking into those and flipping through the pages. Yeah, like with a tweezers and white gloves sort of scenario. Is that how you read them? It's been a long time since I've actually done a full read through of the actual uh, comics themselves. I'm sorry, when are you talking about this? I was just so stuck on the gung-ho art and what his grenade launcher is doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I didn't even really notice that. But yeah, it's uh, it kind of... It, it, the funny thing is, it actually looks more like a flamethrower than it does uh, a grenade launcher. 
Um, but um, no, I quite. I, again, I'm I'm excited for this. Probably more so for fans that maybe haven't got the the full run and can start building it up, starting with these compendiums, because it's a little bit easier, I think, than you know, like you pick this up, you got one to fifty. The next one will probably be. Um, I don't know, maybe special missions um, will be kind of trickled in there in how they do it. I don't know if they'll do that separately. Um, but then obviously, like, you know, 51 through 100 and then 100 through one to through 155 maybe um, is how they might do it and then sprinkle in the special missions in between those two compendiums possibly. Um, it kind of makes sense to do so. I, we don't know that what, what's going to happen with that yet, but it kind of makes sense I would say maybe to incorporate special missions, Pat. What would you think, or do that separately? Uh, I would prefer it to be incorporated, just because if you can get it out there, get it out there. I, I think that people tend to there. There's going to be some, you know, be, be weird to think of it this way, but I think there'd be some people who may skip it and just go for the main title only. If you don't, so right. you kind of will will get a little bit of more sales on it if you just incorporate it and. Uh, I, I do think it's part of the greater story of, of developing these characters. And I, if I'm sitting down and reading everything, I want to read everything in order. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think we talked before about this and I don't expect, you know, GI Joe and transformers to be in it. No. And I don't necessarily expect the stories from like the yearbooks and, and every single story to be in there. But if they were, I mean, that'd be cool too. We would well. I'm I'm pretty sure you'll get Transformers in some way, shape, or form, especially towards the end of the run, because that was technically in the the main issues, wasn't it? So you know, you'll probably um, get them there, but you won't get that that kind of early crossover. I don't think. You never know. We'll see how we see what we'll see how that plays out. Right. But um, that I was I read that again recently and found the whole um, Hawk love thing to be so funny and weird. Do you remember that part? How he's like he falls in love with um I forget who it is now, the uh the kind of like woman in charge of uh the launch and everything. It's so it's so weird. And he's like smoking at one point, just like <laughs> like lamenting the whole like <laughs> situation. And it's so it's so out of character for Hawk. It's such a weird crossover. Um and so it it, it definitely felt like it was like crowbarred in didn't it like it didn't feel it didn't work for me i've got to say um i was excited says, about the crossover as a kid but yeah as, as an adult going back when i've looked at it again it's you know it, it's clear that it was a uh, written oddly and but, also the art in it is quite funny because they they literally reference the it's like the toys are being referenced rather than the you know, the animation models, which would be a bit smoother or the, you know, that kind of thing. So because the toys are the mod, the reference, you get some real like funny sort of like uh, proportions and stuff from some of the, the actual Transformers characters in there. Um, Mark says there's two obvious routes intermingled or keep separate and have everything else as a volume four, aside from about five issues. Most of the special missions missions are fairly standalone. Um, it is tricky to intermingle the special missions issues nicely without breaking up momentum of the main storyline. It's a good point. Maybe yeah. you incorporate special missions that do intertwine with the with the storylines. You know, like maybe you do that, and then the other one. But then again, it's weird breaking them up, isn't it? As well, like I'd, I'd find that really odd. See, I just personally, whenever I'm going back and, and I'm. I'm watching shows that have crossovers or I'm reading comics that are related. I'd rather just read them in the order that I would have read them as they were coming out. Right. So yeah, it is a bit of a breakup of the momentum, but I'd almost rather that happened than to go back and try to remember what issue was happening of the main title as I'm reading the special missions later. Yeah, because that that would that would be the thing, wouldn't it? Like you'd go, you'd read, you'd read through the whole compendium, and then you've got to remember where things slot in when you read a separate book. You just, I, I'm I'm with you. I I would probably, and I don't, I don't think I don't think necessarily put in special missions in in like the other route that Mark was talking about, the other route that Mark was talking about. If you did combine the two completely, I don't think it breaks up the main storyline. Um, 
any more or any worse than like having them separate because yeah you can read through the main storyline and and what have you but then there'll be times when you go to those special missions and you have to kind of remember where that fits in the storyline whereas if it's there in the right place it makes sense and then if there's a break every now and again with a special mission it just feels a bit more realistic it feels like oh gi joe are being op are operating not just on this storyline like it's easy to kind of pick up after reading a special mission in the middle of two issues, it's way easier to pick up the story that you just left off pre previously in it. Like, it's not like you're going to forget yeah. what happened just because one issue kind of pops in there. Um, if there was a huge stack of, like, even if the whole special missions were in one block in there, yeah, that would be confusing and probably wouldn't make any sense. But I would say if you're throwing them in in the order they came out, I think that would be great. You just have to make it clear that this contains issues, da-da-da, and special missions, da-da-da. You just have to make it clear that that's what you were reading, I guess. Right, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how you would do that, because a lot of times, the I mean, the covers aren't inserted in there. So maybe just to the bottom, where there's normally the, the yeah. DCR or whatever, that would just say special missions to make sure that you knew where you were. Yeah, that would be kind of fun. I mean, there are definitely ways to do it, but yeah, I I don't know. I'd it, I would like to. I personally, for me, I think for my own, um, not OCD, but my own kind of like pleasure <laughs> to have all of it together would probably make more sense to me. Plus, what have we got? Like twenty eight issues? Is that right? Of special missions? That sounds about right. I mean, it's not a, a bazillion, so it, but yeah. Yeah, so you kind of you're coming on like it, it, I guess it makes it it weird. Like if your first compendium is one to fifty, you want to kind of keep it in like nice clean blocks. But it ends at one fifty five, so you know maybe that is you know it, it's going to be some there's some element of awkwardness going on. Yeah, twenty eight issues. I was right. So twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty three, one thirty two, thirty three. So you've got like thirty three issues like the five at the end of 150 and then 28 so you got like like i said 33 issues um that would be one compendium by the end of it so it would be like unless they keep going and like putting the idw stuff in there as well i don't know how that would even work but i i guess they've got an idea because they wouldn't just fart out a compendium without having given it any thought for the whole overarching look That'd be great for me if they did the IDW stuff too, because I missed that stuff. So that's true. Yeah, it'd be a great way for you to see to read that. Um, anyway, uh, that will be coming out as I mentioned in October the second, I believe it was. Yes, for sixty four ninety nine uh, with that Andy Cubit cover as well. Um, there you go. That's Compendium One. More information to follow, I guess, but not that I know. They might. What they'll probably do is I'll probably do some. Um, even though we've already seen a lot of the interiors, they might even show what you know the actual interiors might look like very soon in like a preview. Who knows? But um, hopefully we'll get some more information on this uh, very soon. Um, now, we also got this pop-up. This is the only bit of like imagery we've uh, been shown off yet of the free comic book day for the G.I. Joe side of things. Um, and it will be... Joshua Williamson, the writer, Jason Howard, artist, and Mike Spicer, colors. Um, I'm kind of excited for this because I always love Free Comic Book Day, but it's been a hot minute since there was some G.I. Joe content on Free Comic Book Day because I remember one of the ones I went to, oh, it was many moons ago. It was during like the IDW run. And there was nothing G.I. Joe in there. And I was really upset. Like, you know, it was like, I, I got a few free comics that were pretty cool, but there was no G.I. Joe related ones. So it's nice that, we, that we're we going to have some G.I. Joe content this time around. I can't even remember if there was any G.I. Joe free comic books for, for last year. Uh, you'll have to let me know in the comments if that was the case. But um, yeah, I'm interested for this one. Are you still keeping up with the Energon universe, Pat? Are you, um, like, what are you, where are you at with that at the moment? Uh, I, I think that I'm, I still have one issue of Duke to read because I just picked one up the other day, I think. Oh, that's a beauty. Uh, I, no, I definitely picked that up because I can remember where the characters were. Number four just came, was the most recent issue of Duke, right? Yeah. I just picked up the new Transformers as well. And Ooh, yeah. I was behind because I, I'm all, pretty much always going to be behind because 
I, like I've said many times, I don't have a comic book store near me. Yeah. And so my options are either to order things through the mail, which I'm not paying double for every issue. Yeah. If I'm going to order things through the mail. I'm going to order a few issues at a time. Yeah. Which means waiting and not reading everything at the same time. Or I go out of my way to a comic book store. And by then I've waited weeks to uh, pick up some issues. And part of the reason why I was behind before was I had missed just one issue of like Transformers. So it was just, mm. I put it down. I mean, I have a lot of them. I just need to put them in order and I need to find time after I've done that. And I don't, I haven't had a lot of time lately. I was away last week. I wasn't here. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, you were. You were missing. You were absent. That's why I played the wrong video at the start of the uh, show. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I get it, man. I get it totally. I, um, I've got to say, I'm really loving the what they're doing with the Energon universe, and that last Duke issue was freaking wild. Um, and was the one recently? I want to say there was one. Did 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 Cobra Commander come out yesterday, or am I ahead of the? Am I like wrong on that one? I think I might be wrong. I think. We're still behind, aren't we? Not they behind. Come out on waiting. Wednesdays, I thought. Yeah, but sorry, not yesterday. I meant Wednesday, but I can't. No, I uh, no, I don't think so. I think the only Skybound issue Wednesday I thought was Transformers. Okay, I think you're right. Um, okay, cool. Just, I'm just making sure because I, I, I've been loving that comic so much, and the Cobra Commander one. Oh my god! Oh my god! It's so good. There was a real. The last issue was like crazy. Uh, so yeah, I'm really excited for the next uh, installment of that. Anyway, if you do miss out on Free Comic Book Day, which you know I know not all of us are going to be, uh, like I said, like Pat is nowhere near a comic book store, so it's very difficult for him to go and get get to one. Um, and if you do have a spare Saturday um, on the was it the fourth of May? May the fourth be with you. Then um, yeah, go if you're near a local comic book store. Go check out. They'll probably have uh, the, the, you know, they'll probably be doing that as well. I mean, most local comic stores do take partake in this, if not all of them. Oh, Cobra Commander Four this week coming. Yes, it's so nice that they're regular as well. Like, oh my god, I was getting so annoyed with the IDW release schedule, <laughs> which seemed to be whenever we finish it, it'll go out, and then no. it won't go out, and then it will be somehow it'll get to people after Wednesday rather than on when it was such a mess honestly yeah, even though I can't show up to the comic book store all the time it is nice to be able to uh, walk in and know that in the three weeks or four weeks since I've been there that something definitely has come out because it'd be really annoying to be like wait what there's nothing new out you know yeah it's, and it is better that they're e even for me it's better that they're regularly coming Absolutely. So if you do miss out on Free Comic Book Day, then <clears throat> we do have the Energon Universe 2024 special, which comes out after the fact. Um, I think there's a date for it, but I can't recall when that date was. Bear with me. Um, it might not. They might not have a date for it, but um, I would imagine they they should because it was on a it was on an Image Comics post and. May 8th. So if you miss out on the 4th, then May 8th and the Energon Universe 2024 special will be coming out. And this has the same content as Free Comic Book Day, but with more variant covers. So um, as you can see, there are two Joe variant covers here. The Baroness one on the left by Tom Riley and the Flint and Jay cover on the right by Stephen Green. And go on, mate. So if you miss it, you can buy it four days later. Basically, yes. That's interesting. So it's going to be, I'm going to feel real weird walking into a comic book store that if he has still copies that are free. No, that, yeah. what, I don't know what usually happens with on, the, 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 cop, the copies usually stay. They put them on like a, um, like a, a rack or something until they're all gone. So usually like they get rinsed during free comic book day. It kind of depends, I think, on your um, store. But if there is a, still a copy of the free version, you can, you'll can you be able to take that for free, I'd imagine. I don't think you'll be paying for it after the fact. But this is an opportunity to get it if you miss out on it um, following that. So yeah, there you go. Uh, and the cover price for that is $3.99. Uh, we don't know if there's extra content in it yet. It does say, and I'll read the, the blurb out, 
a special new printing of Energon Universe FCBD 2024 special featuring three all new stories from the Energon Universe. Now, when it says three all new stories, I wonder if they're just re referring to the three stories in the original issue, uh, not three extra. So I'm pretty sure there isn't any extra content here. They're not. Wouldn't you assume that it would be like G.I. Joe, Transformers, and Void Rivals? Like that'd be the three stories? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So I don't think necessarily there's any extra content in it, but there might be, and they're just holding back on telling us. Uh, but it says, yeah, that's what it says. It says, with stunning revelations for the world of Transformers, G.I. Joe, and Void Rivals from the biggest name in comics, a perfect jumping on point for new readers, and a can't miss for long-term fans. So I think I, I could see... Um, a lot of people getting on board with the free comic book they want, honestly. Um, yeah, uh, Mark says, as far as I could tell, it was exactly the same apart from the covers. So the covers are going to be the only difference here. So if you're a completist, which I know some of you guys are, then this is going to be necessities for you guys to grab these two covers. Um, but if you know you're just kept collecting it for the storyline, then and you get uh, the opportunity to pop into a local comic store on Saturday, the fourth of May, then just grab it as a free comic book uh, if you can as well. Because obviously, the the other thing I should mention is that on Free Comic Book Day, if you've never been to one, some stores do a big deal about it. Some stores just you know have it there, um, but the the stores that we would go to would make a big uh, kind of day of it. And they'd have kind of people in cosplay doing stuff. And I'm Kate and I went and helped our local comic book store back in Missouri back in the day. Shout out to Distant Planets, uh, Distant Planet Comics and Collectibles. Um, and we basically went in there and I dressed up as, I think I was Ryu. Yeah, I think I was Ryu from Street Fighter. And Kate was, what did Kate go as? I've got, we have pictures from that. And I can't remember what Kate went as. But it was fun. I had a great no, I was Casey Jones. I went as Casey Jones. I remember now. I was I was yeah, because we just had one I think it was one of the dog's birthday parties. I think it was Max's birthday party. Um and we did a special turtles one. And I dressed up as Casey Jones. Kate dressed up as April. It was amazing. Um but anyway, yeah, so we, we helped out and it was a big thing. But the 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 major the ones that everyone wants, obviously they go quick. And there's a line out the door as well. It was crazy. Hmm. It was crazy just for, well, for free comic books and regular comic books as well. Um, in any case, go check it out. They're, they're fun days at your local comic store. And of course, you get free comics out of it. And what could be better? Uh, nothing. So there you go. Right then, Pat, next up, um, we'll move into, from comics, we're going to move into a little bit of kind of Hasbro inside baseball sort of uh, news, I guess you could say. But effectively, okay. it's John Warden. Yes, uh, so there we go. John Warden has joined the Transformers team again, I should say. But have no fear, he is still with the Joe brand as well. So TFW2005 reported that John's LinkedIn page had been updated recently to include a new role as Director of Project Desi Design, managing the collector segments of both Transformers and G.I. Joe. Now... Pat and I, we were we were talking about this beforehand, weren't we, Bud? About um, about John's kind of like, I suppose, entire career at, at Hasbro, and where he'd kind of been. And I went on the LinkedIn page, and he's got a whole like, you know, timeline of what he's done over the years. So I'm going to run through that quickly for everybody. Um, so in 1999 to 2000. John was on the Star Wars Episode 1 and Episode 2 brand. He was a global design lead at that point. Then Pokemon, 2000 to 2005. Then, or overlapping that for a year, G.I. Joe from 2004. Now, it says on here, <laughs> and we were a bit confused about this, it says on here, G.I. Joe, 2004 to 2007. And then it says G.I. Joe again, 2006 to, 2000, to 2013. Did he go back in time and start again? Like, what do you think happened there? You know what I think that is? I think that that may be the end of the uh, the new sculpt O-ring era being marked as 2007. Right. And the start of Sigma-6 starting... Development? As, as, yeah. Or, yeah, I, I don't... I, I mean, I'm not sure about the development of that stuff and how how yeah. quickly all of that happened, but... But he wow. could have joined during a certain point in time of Sigma Six, couldn't he? I guess. 
Is that what you, it, 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 like, so you could be well, like... Sig you, Sigma 6 came out in 2006, didn't it? Or is it 2005? Well, if it came out in, yeah, if it did come out in 06, then it, it makes sense to me that they just grabbed him and put, or they put, they also added him to the responsibility of that as well, if that makes sense, at the same time of its re launch or release. I was just kind of thinking since those were almost treated as two separate projects. Right. Maybe he's listing that as this is this G.I. Joe project I was also in charge of till its end, but I'd also started this other G.I. Joe project. Yeah, you know, they they it really was like a a new thing. The other the other thing is it could be a typo. I didn't even think about that before, but it could be it should be two thousand six and two thousand seven the other way. Like it should be two thousand six and then he started again at two thousand seven. But why wouldn't you just go straight through to yeah. twenty thirteen? Like it. Yeah, it's quite it funny. could also be that he's talking about starting with the 25th line or something in in 2007. There you go look just so people can see what I'm talking about. It's quite funny that that's a little that you know there's no di there's no differentiation between GI Joe there which yeah, is they're right next to each other. So Yeah. And then Transformers from 2013 to 2020 um and then Beyblade he jumped on at 2017 to 2020 and then that's when in um 2020 that he was on Power Rangers and Ghostbusters and he was put on like you know, um, I think he was, was it say, senior design manager, global design lead, brand strategy and design direction. So he, a lot of stuff going on there with Ghostbusters, Power Rangers. And then um, he got put on Joe in April of 2021, which was in, is interesting. And that's where it changed from Power Rangers, G.I. Joe and Ghostbusters. And that's changed obviously in 2024. And now it is um, Transformers Generations, Transformers Studio Series, and GI Joe Classified. So he has he's moved around quite a, quite a lot, hasn't he? But not not great distances, should we say? Like he's always just like you know he's kind of like jumping on that little track while he's still on this one, but then like maybe going a little bit further, and then he comes back to this track. And so he's he's on the same sort of vibe, but he does move around. The, the, that that job does kind of have him almost like parachuting in a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, and and I could imagine that there's probably other reasons why it would be handy to have a person on design of both GI Joe and Transformers right now, right at the same time. It makes a lot of sense, doesn't it, with all of the uh, the crossover news and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, um, I know you can't discuss it, but I'm going to mention it right now. Um, it was confirmed at CinemaCon, um, just to, was it yesterday? It might have even been yesterday, or the day before. Um, that. Uh, the G.I. Joe Transformers crossover movie is in development. They even had a logo, apparently, on the presentation, which hasn't it hasn't snuck out yet, as far as I'm aware, um, like an image of it or anything. And like I said, I know you can't discuss that, Pat, so we'll move on. But um, I did cover that on the news burst uh, yesterday. So um, I'll probably be talking to Justin about the movie news again this week um, at some point, so keep a lookout for that. Um, Ed says, I bet Warden was on New Sculpt 2007 and Dev on 25th anniversary in 2006 for the 2007 release. That sounds probably quite solid there, actually, Ed. Quite because we do know that John was involved with the 25th, don't we, Pat? I'm pretty sure we do. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, I think that that you know that sounds pretty solid. Um, in any case, um, yeah, that is the situation. And like I said, um, the, here is the kind of information that was on TFW 2005. Um, fact, it was all found on the LinkedIn page, as I've just been going through. Um, having previously worked on the team during the Prime Wars and WFC trilogy years, Warden's new position will be as Director of Product Design, managing the collector segments of both Transformers and also G.I. Joe. So good luck to John in his new role, uh, although it's probably the same role, just evolved, changed, moved around a little bit. And like Pat just mentioned, it makes sense that he's going to be overseeing um, two brands that look to be getting a lot of crossover at the moment. The Energon Universe comics, the, the movies, and the toys. I mean, it, it's oddly one of, the, one of the most significant times these two have crossed over in a long period of time. Like, it, it seems to be like they're being, you know, utilized together even more so than we've seen in like revolution in um you know like we talked about the comics back in the 80s and stuff like that uh would you agree with that mate i would agree with that i always find it weird whenever people um are upset about the crossover between the two because of the fact that the brands 
have always been so intertwined essentially mm. from the beginning um but yeah. it, it almost feels like usually if anyone doesn't like it it's the gi joe fans that don't like the transformers being with them rather than the transformers I, fans i i wonder that's a it's weird that because i always thought it was the other way around and it might just be it might just be the fact that uh of who we follow possibly and what we're seeing because like Mm. I do, I do see. I mean, I do see a lot of GI Joe people kind of going like, "Oh, why? I don't care, or whatever." But I, I do also see quite a lot of scorn sometimes from the trans. It's different. I think it's a different mindset. The Transformers guys always feel like they're like, "We don't like why are we doing this. We don't really necessarily need it, but we don't care at the same time." And the Joe guys seem to be like in a similar mindset, but like we don't need Transformers to you know, to be good or whatever. They're both coming at it kind of from the same position, but in the different directions. Like Maybe. They... Yeah, I don't know, I mean, it's weird. I, I kind of feel like with Transformers, there's just a general, there, there's a large group of people that are always upset whenever humans are even focused on at all. Right, right. The Transformers stories. And I yeah. can understand that because sometimes things do focus on the, the human element a little bit too much. Big time. So uh, I I think that that's more where the Transformers crowd comes from in not liking it. Because even like the 2007 movie, a lot of people were like, why wasn't that just G.I. Joe? Yeah. You know, that came out. So yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll see. I mean, there's always been a, it's always been something that's kind of crossed over, even in the origin of the toy. So to me, it's, uh, to me, it makes sense. And for me, it's two brands that I follow the most. Yeah. So I, I, I'm all about um, John Warden being on both of them too because he's done such a good job on things in the past. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's really true. Actually, like John has got a very good uh, track record with what he's done with both brands. Uh, of course, he was on. I think he was um, quite heavily involved in Pursuit of Cobra as well, wasn't he? I want to say. Yeah, I think so. Um, and so, like that, you know, that's that's always one of those kind of like like hot kind of moments in the G.I. Joe brand that everyone kind of like tends to kind of look towards as a very as a high point in the modern kind of era so um yeah it's funny like at some point the modern era that I always refer to is going to have to change to vintage three or something like that isn't it? it's like crazy James Cavanaugh I would have that conversation almost weekly yeah. Whenever people would be like modern era or just shorten it M E, like in capital letters, we'd be like, hey, you know, this is not a good name for this. It was never we're going a good to get hated in five years. It was never yet, a good name. It was never a good name. New sculpt never. era made sense. New sculpt era made sense because it was yeah, going but... from but what was funny? <laughs> They're not it... new anymore. No. It kind of didn't make sense either, but it was kind of that hindsight that it's like this. You know, it just it doesn't make sense to call things. This is the brand new era. No, it, it, I mean, I think it makes sense. I, the, I, I've obviously I've heard people refer to the vintage line. I say vintage line, but I've heard people refer to that as a real American hero, a, a era, yeah. or whatever. Which yeah. again makes sense because there is like an. It does feel like the you know a real American hero has that like clear end point at like ninety four, and then you have um, you know, then you have that kind of like new branding different brand names and stuff like that so it it makes right. sense that that would be the real american hero era um the problem where that gets a little bit kind of fuzzy is the fact that you're kind of doing a real american hero in the 25th but of course it's got the 25th a a attached to it so that's nice and comfortable and modern era you can kind of like that'll phase out i think anyway because you'll refer to things as um you know, spy troops, Valor versus Venom. Um, you know, Sigma Six. You refer to it as the the kind of branding title in a, in a sense. The Real American Hero Collection, GI Joe versus Cobra, twenty um, fifth. But then twenty fifth has to change, um, and we don't get a change until like was it the thirtieth? I think there's we get five years of the twenty fifth, pretty much, don't we? Which is impossible. But we don't. I think modern era was devised to describe everything post that first year of the 25th right and then it kind of took everything else on board in the form. yeah i think you're i think you're right because people did usually just say 25th up until the time where it was about to end and then i remember somebody asking hasbro well, what do you call it and somebody at hasbro saying well we've been calling it like the classic series because transformers cl had classics at the right 
at the time, not long before. And then another person from Hasbro said, oh, no, we just call it G.I. Joe. There's no yeah. sort of anything. Yeah, because they're working in it in the time. They don't have to refer to it in any sort of way, right. do they? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's really funny. And yeah. And, and then I guess, yeah, 25th, 30th. Pursuit, um, hang on. Yeah. Pursuit of Cobra, 30th. Sorry, Rise of Cobra. Pursuit of Cobra, 30th. Yeah. Um, retaliation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, 50th. And you know, 50th. Pursuit of Cobra also was just called that by the fans and didn't say that on the package. Did it really? I don't think that said it on the package. It didn't say on the package, did it? It was it was in the no. um, but it was in some sort of text like blurb. I'm sure it was. Well, it, it the first Pursuit of Cobra stuff was actually on. I think that that's something mentioned on the last Rise of Cobra figures, isn't it? And it was supposed to be an imprint of Rise of Cobra. It was yeah. supposed to be G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra, The Pursuit of Cobra. Yeah. Like it would say that at the very bottom of the packages of those ones of that wave that didn't come out with like Snow Job and Storm Shadow and, um, you know. Oh, I'm just I'm, I'm feeling like I've been conned my entire existence because it doesn't have Pursuit of Cobra written anywhere. It says like, G.I. Joe on it, yeah. I thought it would be in like, you know, like the file card, thing. not the file cards, but like, you know, they had blurb on the back if it was like the desert or the jungle or the or the mission or something. I right. could have sworn it had it on that. And now I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, no, it probably didn't. Um, but it did at some point, Pursuit of Cobra was utilized in some way. At the, at the conventions, we were told, hey, this is going to be, you know, the Pursuit of Cobra line is pretty much what we were told. But uh, it was really like if you looked at the packages it was like an imprint of the rise of cobra line yeah unless they were going to do a soft transition and actually say gi joe pursuit of cobra at the top which could have also happened but yeah i mean if you look at the pursuit of cobra figures it just says gi joe it doesn't have any sort of a real american hero or the real american hero or no pursuit just a, cobra that, or rise chrome, of cobra. that really yep. sexy chrome out says GI joe. That's yeah it. I'm just, excuse me, I'm just looking um, at the moment for some, was it 2010? You know what, um, I guess on the back it does say like Pursuit of Cobra, the Desert Battle, but it's Ah, uh, not... right, okay. I was, Honestly, I was getting to the point where I'm thinking, I've definitely seen it, so I've got to, I've, I'm either going crazy. Right, but you'd think that if it was like the name of the brand, it would be on the front of the package. Right. You know what I mean? Or the name totally. of the series. Yeah, I, I yeah. think it's not uh, an appropriate thing to call it. It's just, uh, it's just was in a little bit of a weird spot when I were talking about uh, names of GI Joe lines, which is such, such a tangent from the fact that John Warden is back on the GI Joe or back on the Transformers brand. I'm, I'm just, just to uh, clarify here, as you can see, yeah, the Pursuit of Cobra yeah. City Strike. Yeah, I was going to say I knew I'd seen it somewhere, yeah, but it's not on the front. No. Uh, I, I just I was I thought I'd gone absolutely crazy there though. Like I'm 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 thinking, have I just been calling it that? And the whole time it's like G.I. Joe um classic <laughs> series or something. <laughs> no, now you're making me want to go back and look at that, look at some of the 2009 or 2010. I think it was 2000. Yeah, 2010, 2010 the first but... that had uh the last wave, I, I could have sworn the last wave of Rise of Cobra said something in the bottom as well. Yeah, you're right. I think it did. I think it like they were, they were. It was a big. It was a big narrative that they were kind of going into, wasn't it? Like they've checked. Like right, Cobra have been defeated and are on the run, and we are now going after them on the offensive, in all of these different areas of the globe, sort of thing. Um, yeah, it was a really, it was a really fun time as a collector. I've got to say, and yeah, we have gone on a massive tangent here. Let's move on because we we've talked. <laughs> we are forty minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> we've done <laughs> we've done the comics and we've done John Warden. Amazing stuff. Okay. Uh next up then we've got a bit of classified news. <laughs> and here was me saying, like, oh, good luck to John in his new role. I mean, it's the same role he's had for like ever. He's just doing it with different brands. Anyway. Yeah, good luck doing that thing you already know how to do and been doing for years. <laughs> Good luck with that. Good luck, John. I'm doing something you know everything about already. Congratulations. <laughs> um, no, that's amazing. Anyway, 
Um, now we've got some classified news for you. Yes, another busy week. Uh, saw a rather surprise pre-order drop for the Target exclusive Tiger Paw and Wreckage. It was such a surprise that even Target weren't aware. Um, Hasbro Pulse posted the figure and vehicle set on their web store at 9 a.m. EST for premium members and sold out within a quarter of an hour. Target had them much later in the day and also sold out within about half an hour. It's likely more will show up again soon, so have no fear if you missed out on Thursday's drops. In addition to that, Ken Christensen has been posting concept inputs for the classified vamp on his social platforms. So let's check those out first, Pat. We'll check out those before we get onto the Tiger Force uh, stuff. I love when Ken posts things because he does a lot of work on the vehicles, doesn't he? And this is pretty cool to see the vamp kind of uh, like concept inputs, I would say. Ah, uh, for sure. Yeah. Um, was this the same art that was used in the instructions? It might be, you know. It might very well be. But yeah. I think Ken did, Ken did a really good job on this. I think so too. I think I noticed the uh, difference on the ammo cans. The, the, oh. the fact that the it's not the same as as what ended up coming out because like there's that little shelf and it's best to put them sideways. Um, these look like there may have been some spot to try to lock them on the main platform of the vamp, and then they yeah, didn't do that. like maybe even a peg or something. Yeah. Um, no, you're right. I wonder if they just kind of like left them there and they kind of sat nicely and they thought, oh, that will be fine. But then when you when you, you come to mass produce it, not everything is going to turn out necessarily exactly the same comfortable way. Um, and it might be one of those things that, yeah, like, how do you have them now, by the way? Do you have them like that, that we're seeing at the moment? Or do you have, I them, have them disassembled and put back in the box? <laughs> Uh, oh, and also tell the uh, tell the good tell all the folks at home that uh, it was actually less, not as difficult taking the wheels off than you expect. Oh <laughs> yeah, no, it's. I mean, there was. I, I was concerned that I would never get it because I do. I, I don't have tons of space, so and I've not been throwing away my boxes, and that's a nice big one. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was just easy enough to to pop the wheels off and put it back. It really wasn't hard at all. Because there was um, that. I, I had that like. Um, Ghostbusters fire um, house uh, kind of like nightmare where when you put the roof on, it's like, yeah, you ain't, you ain't get, unless you've got six friends who can each hold a clip at the same time while you try and pull that thing off, it's actually almost impossible. That is like a, a clip on stay on. Or like the, the 30th Sky Striker. Like oh once God, you assemble yeah. that, it's not going back in the box. Kunk, kunk, wings are in. You're, yeah, game over, mate. Yeah. Um, Yes, exactly like that. Did they change the wing structure on some of the later releases of that where they plugged in to the like to the nubbins that moved out? Or am I making that up? I don't think so. And it for me it was the cockpit, like snapping the cockpit on that yeah, felt that's, very yeah. You're right. You look that is that that square block with the little bit clip on the bottom, wasn't it? And you yeah, clunk click. Yeah. Never again. Um yeah. Yeah. In the next image you can kind of see uh where the like if if that's where the ammo was supposed to go, you can kind of see that that's a doesn't have like a clear peg or anything drawn on there. Right, right. So, so it was it, never intended necessarily, possibly. I don't know. Right. It may have been intended to be more of a. I don't know if you wanted it to be more rigid. I'm not really sure what he was going for with the um, with the concept on the ammo, but I like the solution that they've made. You know, I mean, you always have to change things a little bit during the production process. Yeah. yeah. So the shelf that if you put the ammo instead of this way, you know, taller rather than wider, they fit. It just fits just fine. It's, yeah. it's good. Cool. Um, yeah, it's a really cool vehicle. Hugely popular as well. I was amazed this one sold out, honestly. Um, really more on price point and size. But if people like yourself are picking it up, who you know like are picking and choosing in certain choose, areas yeah. and you know especially with this with the space scenario then you know this is going to be a, a an absolute like home run of a release and uh yeah it, it's just really cool and it's cool to see again to see the kind of breakdowns um of this vehicle kind of in its concept input phase which is really cool um mine by the way is in the united kingdom and i have to wait till i go over there to get it isn't that sad that is I, sad I didn't bother doing the shipping because it would have been ridiculous. So I thought, you know what? I'll just pick it up next time I'm out there. So. Well, you're going to enjoy it. Hopefully you don't have a stinger before you experience the vamp. 
that that could happen. Wouldn't bother me. Like the the stinger, I think, is my one of my all time one of my all time favorite Cobra. I mean, yeah, assuming that they do the stinger before they do like a, a Tiger Force or whatever Force or the Street Fighter version or whatever no, we're getting <laughs> next. <laughs> Can can we please can we please get some Street Fighter vehicles up in here, guys? That would be amazing. Thank you very much. Um, anyway, uh, I also I tell you what I can't wait for uh, the Dragonfly. Oh my god, that thing is going to be beautiful, and it's going to be so big and ridiculous. And I can't wait. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I'm 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 literally gonna I'm gonna carve out a room. <laughs> in the house <laughs> to basically store it and the his tank no it's gonna i think it's gonna have to i'm gonna have to redistribute all of my cobra team um on the top shelf and i'm gonna put them over on the other bookshelf over there which has a giant autobot um orange arc display i know i should probably put the joes in there but i'm gonna make it like as if the Cobra team have broken in and they're like, you know, taking over the arc and they're nicking all of the, you know, the information, the, all the electronics and all of the Cybertronian technology. Um, and then I'm going to put the top Dragonfly on top of that bookshelf because it's the only way it's going to work because that thing is so big, I can't even. And then I guess I just wait for the um, inevitable Eagle Hawk. Yeah. Tomahawk. You think that's going to happen? No, I mean, well, I mean, you maybe. hope it doesn't, but I hope it bloody does. I, honestly, if it does, it'll probably just stay in the box like the dragonfly because I kind of doubt that I'm opening the dragonfly, especially not right away. No, I, I will want yeah. to know if it breaks back down because I don't, I, I'm not going to dedicate space to display it. I'll at some point open it, enjoy checking it out, um, but I'm not going to be playing with it or really displaying it. I just, I don't know, it was that. Fear missing out a little bit that maybe buy yeah. that. Also the figures and stuff like that. Especially so you're not gonna. One. So you're not gonna just replace it with your vehicle that you drive to work with now, and you just like fly that in every now and again, right? You know? Yeah, it'd be nice if I could. Uh, I'd have fewer traffic issues. <laughs> Draw like a little helipad on your driveway, <laughs> just chalk, pop it there, away you go, sorted. Um, amazing. And there's the un there's the undercarriage. Bit of a uh, bit of sexy undercarriage for the for all the creeps out there. There you go. Check it out. Nice. I haven't. Have you looked at the underside of your vamp by any chance? You you, you strike me as the sign of person that would like that would study every inch of something. Um, I I looked at it. I did. I, I glanced at it. I I don't want a flat bottom on these, so it's very nice that um, it's detailed. Although right now Maybe the only thing I think of is did I make the did I make the treads go the same direction? Oh yeah. As they are depicted here. And I think I did. I think this is actually what I went with. Yeah, so, I think you did. Because I remember do I remember going through that with you for like an hour on after the show and we were talking about it and yeah, having it like line up and all that kind of stuff. Amazing. Uh anyway, there's another shot of I, I guess the seats section, um, which is pretty dope. I think that is yeah it is isn't it yeah it's a it's a central yeah. kind of driving and passenger console and uh and seats which is pretty dope anyway you can check all those images out and look in maybe even compare it with your vamp that you have at home and just see how close uh it ended up becoming um the exact same if it did or not uh anyway let's move on pat now i did a little let's talk classified saber tooth wreckage episode on the other day um just kind of cuz i saw a lot of comments when we posted the first leaked image of um, Wreckage and the Tiger Paw that was revealed, um, obviously, this week. And a lot of people were like, who's Wreckage? And I was kind of a little bit like, just go on Yojo and, and look, because you'll find all the information you'll ever likely to need there. Um, but instead, I went, no, you know what? I'm going to fill in anyone, and not in that way, um, their knowledge, I'll fill in their knowledge um, of this particular character. Now, 1988 Hasbro Toy Fair catalog, we got this uh, beautiful scene, didn't we? Did we not? Uh, which depicted a number of characters that we never saw in Tiger Force form in that vintage era, to call it the vintage era. Yeah, full circle. Um, do you, what do you remember 
when did you first become aware, I should say, of these unreleased Tiger Force kind of decos and figures? Um, you know, I was actually looking at this myself the other day, independent of, of whatever it was that you, you were posting and talking about, just to try to remember exactly when it was I did first see them. Because I, I know for sure the first image that I saw of these was in black and white. And that may have just been a photocopy of the Toy Fair co catalog that maybe a friend sent me. Right. Like back in the very early 90s. They faxed um, it to you, did they? Right. Yeah. No, I did not <laughs> did not have a fax machine. I didn't have a computer. Maybe I would have seen a color version of it if I had had a computer and was going they, on some sort of bulletin board. They paged like it to you and the pixels came through along the pager display. Very well. Quick. <laughs> the earliest images of these on Yo Jo are ridiculously pixelated. I'm sure that they that that image was one where originally people were downloading an image viewer on their computer in order yeah. to be able to look at that uh, GIF or JPEG. And um, yeah, it's the the color on it was so bad right. that you couldn't quite see the detail. You knew what figures they were because you're familiar with the the originals yeah. but some of the smaller details you were just never going to see you weren't really able to see what accessories everybody was holding which seems entirely wrong uh i'm guessing that the person who painted the models shipped them off to a photographer and yeah. the photographer did not either didn't keep the figures with their accessories or the person that shipped them assumed they would know who, what accessories went to what characters. Right, right. Yeah. Um, you could kind of tell that there's some weirdness here. Like, you can't quite see in that photo, but, like, uh, Sabretooth's knee is bent, and you can clearly see the gray. Oh, there it is, from can, Firefly yeah. underneath. So yeah. those are the kind of things that tell me, hey, you know, the photographer was told to do his thing, and he was given painted figures, but it wasn't the same person with the plan from the beginning. Right. Um, how funny would it have been if they'd have given him Rakondo's rifle as well? Like, how funny would that have been? Didn't the club do that? I can't remember. I'm fairly certain that whenever the club did Sabretooth, I think... Well, they did they... Wreckage, didn't they? Yeah, they did. You're right. They did. I think you're right. I think they did do Wreckage. But with a closer deco to Sabretooth. Right. We'll get there that in a second, right. actually. We'll get there. In... in fact, I'll just do this. There he is. Um, I don't, I, they're the only images I took, but um, I'll just quickly see if they did give him that rifle, because that's really fun if they did. Pretty sure it was. Yeah, it, it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it was brilliant. It was the Recondo rifle. That's that they phenomenal. Gave him. That's yep. phenomenal. Um, that's so much fun that they did that. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they. This is this figure was by far closer to Sabretooth than the wreckage figure that we had gotten earlier because yeah so I'll, um, we'll go through that now but so yeah this this was obviously like i said saber tooth and like uh, yeah. pat was saying um the photographer probably didn't know what was going with what figure and that that again we've seen that so many times haven't we and back in the day as well when certain like figures were sent out to be outsourced to be done like either in like a commercial or a t or a uh a, 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 a magazine sort of kind of um photography sort of spot and anyway then in 2003 we get this five pack of uh tiger force for the um like i said for the toys r us exclusive and for the gi joe versus cobra is what i was kind of reaching at uh this was was this 20th anniversary it was wasn't it um that wasn't 20th anniversary as well didn't they have the scarlet snake eyes two pack i want to say i think you're correct yeah the the, the toy fair f-a-r-e issue yeah right yeah i yeah. remember getting that um in new york um because it i i hadn't been able to get it and then i went on a trip with friends in like oh it was early 2000s but um yeah it was um i managed to pick up that um that two pack and this is a an interesting set because we have two kind of skin tone variations of this guy now what were your what's your theory on this one pat in terms of the deco that they went with in 03 do you think they were looking at uh an image that wasn't as clear as the one oh, we have now for sure that's what yeah. that's why i originally set my set us up 
and you knew I was doing that at the time, uh, talking about how pixelated and bad that image was on Yojo, and you can yeah. barely tell any of the details. I really think that somebody went off of that in order to create this figure, um, because there's also kind of a, a strange color to it, almost like it was photographed in a room with warm lighting. And so you almost have to subtract out to what the color would have been, but there wasn't easy Photoshop and, and corrective things to do that at the time. True. So, and I did actually look at the original Yojo page for it this week. And yeah, it's, it's really rough. Um, but I, I think that they probably were going off of that image in order to create this one. And if you look, uh, you know, Sabretooth had was like a, a base green plastic with yellow stripes. And this figure is a base black plastic with yellow stripes, which even with these Yojo images, um, it's the, the dim lighting is like almost uncertain if it's a very, very dark green or if it's black, but it, it's black. Yeah, it's black. Yeah, 100%. <clears throat> and I think um, uh, as well, when you look at the saber tooth, you can see that because the balaclava isn't the same as the orange necessarily on right, the shirt, right. and the, like you said, they've got that like bright light on him in a image that doesn't have, you know, like a black and white, for example, that balaclava would come across very light and also gray would probably look a little bit as well. So I can understand why they went here with this particular deco. And, you know, it's, it's you know it's fun. Obviously, we got this character, which was obviously homaging uh, Saber Tooth, but you're effectively. I mean, it's it's almost like you're creating two different characters here, isn't it? It's almost like we've got a Saber Tooth and a wreckage now. Yeah, I and that's kind of how I feel about it. I, I feel like we do have both of them. Oh, um, FC Viper said, uh, Chris, can you please update the listings for Pat today? We all know he loves that. Uh, hilarious, and yes, we will be doing that later. Um, <laughs> Anyway, yes, uh, we, we also got, with, this is what I really liked about this particular release, though, more than the actual figure. And also the artwork has green on it, which is also completely mind-numbing. Huh. Like that, that, that's kind of confusing too, isn't it? Because you've, yeah, got, so you've effectively point, got the deco yeah. of Sabretooth here. Yeah, that's a good point. I hadn't noticed that. I need to go back and, and enjoy kind of digging through some of that stuff. I think that there is the jinx in that set i think was a different color too you have that image in here don't you uh i have this you, image yes <laughs> and there on the package you can see that jinx's art she's kind of like a, an orange or a red yep which isn't the same as the toy that came out so yeah sometimes the art really was revealing like ideas that that artist would have been sent so absolutely maybe they did realize that he was supposed to be green that's a that's a good point um and it maybe yeah but maybe it was too late as well uh maybe they'd already kind of gone ahead with i don't know it's it's interesting yeah. usually usually the art is one is something you can probably change a lot easier than the entire deco of a figure but um it depends what stage was in and it'd be interesting to know what was going on at that point actually with this uh but what i do like about this figure is the fact that the the bio starts delving into this character which obviously we didn't have before we just had an image of firefly repainted called saber tooth and we didn't really know what was going on with it but I love the fact that they made him obviously demolitions, but more in like a rather than in a kind of like, you know, uh, sabotaging, you know, evil way. He's kind of like clearing the path of debris and, you know, uh, taking doors down and like blowing um, enemy vehicles up and stuff like that. Like, so there's a there's a there's a there's a reason um, that he's also got the same kind of similar specialty as Firefly, which is kind of funny. And then obviously making him a jungle war warfare instructor is cool because he's part of the Tiger Force. So it all kind of makes sense. Um, but the, the really cool stuff was the fact that he would play the bad guys in opposing in op for or opposing forces uh training scenarios. So he would be on the opposition forces where he would be an enemy and play an enemy. And effectively that's kind of like another kind of hint towards the fact that it was Firefly that they're repainting. So I kind of like all these little kind of, um, you know, kind of homages and, and, and kind of links to Firefly as a, as a character as well, even though they're two completely different characters. I like that they're, they're almost like aware of the, you know, being very, I don't know, cute with it when they were kind of coming up with that information. And um, as we said before, 2015, Tiger Force versus Iron Grenadiers, 
uh, the club effectively gave us a Sabretooth deco but called the character Wreckage. And I completely didn't realize that he had the Recondo rifle, completely forgot about that. So that's another little addition. So thank you, Pat. This is why you're on the show. No, oh, finally, that, that that's was, it. That's what it's been leading up to all Just these years. That, the, in all those years, you can the go Recondo, now. The Recondo gun was was it, dude. You are free. You've done you've done the job. We've built up to that one Recondo <laughs> rifle thing. That remember the first episode we ever did, and I was like, okay, so the whole point of this is to get to this Recondo rifle. Completely forgot about it, and now it's reminded me of that. So. Uh, don't go checking that out, guys, because uh, it's a lie. Um, anyway, Pat, yeah, this figure is this. I, I got to say, Springfield. I loved Springfield Joe Con. It was so much fun. Um, but the main thing was the fact that I love that Tiger Force set, and I love that Eagle, that Tiger Hawk, that Tiger Eagle Hawk. Like that was one of my favorite sets. Um, yeah. Were you a fan of this one? Yeah, this is almost a, a, an example of a perfect figure from the club. This is. Not something that even, I mean, at this point in the club, it was it was a little bit weird because some of the figures that we were getting from them felt like they just should have been retail figures. Yeah. Uh, but not really this one. This one to me did not seem like one that was a, a surefire thing to just get at retail if G.I. Joe had been still running retail, um, which at yeah. that point it was. Yeah, it was it Toys R Us at that yeah. point. But I, I can't imagine Toys R Us having done this at the time. No. It would have been nice. Um, but yeah, this was a this is a really good figure. And I, I was happy to have it and I still am. I would still love um an O ring one in these colors and have it be called Sabretooth, but I think that's pretty safe to assume we're probably gonna get that at some point with Super Seven though. You think so? I think it's pretty safe to assume. I mean the fact that and I'll just skip past his file card, but it's effectively very similar. Um, Dylan L. Moreno, if anyone wanted to know his name. Um, and uh, he, oh, he was also born in Los Angeles, California as well. I didn't mention that before. But here is their reaction version of Sabretooth uh, by name as well, Pat. So um, didn't give him the Recondo rifle, though. Probably missed, missed opportunity there. Um, but... I think based on this being the most recent, other than obviously wreckage, which we'll be talking about in a second, this is um it, it's an interesting, it's an interesting action figure history, isn't it? It's one that never had one of that original thing, and we're still trying to find an original thing. Uh like we're talking, we're trying to find a saber tooth in some sort of original factor. And I think like this is the closest. And then I think I've got a feeling that we'll probably see one in O-ring as well. And that'll be the first time Sabretooth has been revealed, like, you know, released as an O-ring figure. That'd be quite exciting times, I think. Yeah, that would be, I, I would love that. And personally, I mean, it, go ahead and give them both. But I, I really do feel like whoever was taking those photos just mixed up accessories. So yeah, I kind of prefer him to have just the Firefly accessories but again that's, it adds to that's that how it would have come out it adds to that rich history and interest and fun and mystery and stuff i I, I just like the i like the i like that there's those kind of little funny quirky things happened which at the time probably go unnoticed as well like i don't think many people even if they saw that in the hasbro toy catalog were talking about it in the depth and like detail that we're talking about it right now like they might have been going, oh, is that a is that a Firefly repaint? Someone may have noticed that. May at the time, looking through the Hasbro, like at the time in '88, looking through that Toy Fair catalog, may have noticed it was a Firefly repaint. But would they have noticed the weapon? Like I don't think so necessarily. Yeah, no, I I don't think so either. You never and know though. On the pictures on Yojo at the time, you couldn't tell what the accessories really were. <laughs> Um, Barking Fruit says Moreno, Dawn's relative. No, um, that particular Dylan L. Moreno name came in 2003, which was, I would imagine, a Hasbro employee or a relative or something at the time is usually how it goes. And um, that name then, obviously, that was that predates Dawn by about, oh, God, 17 years, maybe. I don't know when Dawn Moreno first came onto the scene, but it was in like the... 2010s ish, wasn't it? Should have been like been 2015, little... maybe. Yeah, so not quite that many years. This is 2000, uh, 
two. When did Dawn Moreno three. come out? Let's have a look. Dawn Moreno. I mean, just because they're they're not already related doesn't mean that they can't do some sort yeah. of yeah. A bit of, but and also, how funny does that tie in with how Firefly was an Arashikagi member and how Dawn Moreno is effectively Snake Eyes, who is an Arashikagi member? It kind of it's quite funny that that could be like a six degrees of separation sort of. Uh, um, what's the word? Like a, a retcon almost. So 2017, she made her debut. Late 2017. So yeah, that would have been. Yeah, he's he's kind of saying the same years. thing I was thinking, where it's it's a neat coincidence that you could develop. Could there are a lot of GI Joes with a lot of same last names. Where uh, and, and I don't, the story for him really hasn't ever been explored beyond the file cards. True. True. So there's a lot of um, common last names where you could do some sort of family relation uh, story. Absolutely. There's, there's potential there. Oh, yeah. Barking Fred was saying it's just a coincidence. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I will now give my classified wreckage the Tiger Force Recondo gun. Well done, RKW. You have completed the classified series. Um, just as Pat has completed his time with the full force, give him, give him a round of applause as he as he Yay. leaves, as he signs off you know, before, you know, before the before this before the list tonight, everybody before, before the listings. <laughs> it's like I've got to get out of here before the listings happen. Um, no, but anyway, we do have a new wreckage to talk about, Pat. Uh, and why I haven't spoken to you about this at all yet. So this is completely fresh opinions from Pat. In my in my, you, uh, I, I just hope you don't get upset. I know what you're going to say. You're going to say you hate it because it... No, I'm kidding. I'm not going to get upset at all. I think I'm totally open for whatever you feel on this one, dude. Because I know, obviously, you would... Um, I, I know you were very strongly connected to the Sabretooth Deco. I totally get that. They have definitely gone wreckage Deco, haven't they? Very, much much closer to the 2003 wreckage well, Deco. Closer, but but even far further away from Sabretooth. Yes. Um yeah, I I was happy Just, that, that you had put up the link yeah. so I could get my pre-order in because I, I'd missed the Pulse pre-order. So I have a, a target pre-order and I was busy. Like I didn't have, I did not have time to look at the thing. I'm like, I'll just put the pre-order in. I'll decide later. I got home and I actually went into Target to cancel it. But oh, then, no way. Yeah, because this just is not working for me. But then I thought, well... The fear of missing out with, am I going to cancel something that's sold out? I couldn't bring myself to actually do it. <laughs> I, I still have a pre-order for a toy that I don't really love. It, it, you know you know what bothers me about it? It's that it's less wild. I mean, we're talking Tiger okay. Force here. Yeah. And it is less wild than any of previous incarnation of wreckage or saber tooth interesting yeah, the fact yeah. That they, like sometimes i think in in mo modern toys the thing to do is to tone it down we ha we have color tone it down uh m make it more drab make it mm. more subdued and they took away the yellow uh, you know not only do we not have the green we have the black of wreckage which is fine but they took away the yellow the plus though and this could be a good plus, is that it does leave the door more open to do what you said and to make them two separate characters. So, well, that's well, that was actually what I was leading to next. I was going to say, well, does it not make you more happy that you've got a, a very clear deco separation for maybe some other, um, you know, saber tooth to come out uh, later down the road? I don't even know how they would do that. Would they do? Would it be fun to do like a retro carded Tiger Force card back? That would be kind of fun, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, that would be fun. That would be a lot of fun, and it would be neat to to get Saber Tooth in there. I don't think that they necessarily would go right that no. direction mm -hmm. with him. Um, the eyes also are a little bit. Eh, they could have made him look a little friendlier to differentiate him a little more from Firefly. Well, I wonder if it would have been better to um just to show. There you go. There's just to kind of help Pat out with his description of the eyes. Do you like the fact they've put a Saber Tooth Tiger? sort of deco on the face with the fangs to kind of almost hint at the saber tooth thing or does that then close the door on saber tooth being um you know a separate later? character yeah, yeah. See, that's that's part of what I, i'm almost indifferent to it because it's like well this isn't the the classic figure anyway it's it's fine 
I don't love it. And then it, it almost, I, I don't want to say that I hate it, but I lean toward not liking it. Right. <laughs> does that make sense? Yes. I lean does. toward, uh, you know, I, I would have just said, eh, neat idea, but no. I, I, uh, I totally, totally um, understand where you're coming from. I, on the other hand, very much dig this a lot. I think it looks really cool. And I'm looking at it from a point of view of, you know, they've they've kind of like the exact for the exact reasons you don't like it, I think it's the reasons why I, I think it's quite clever what they've done. Um, like the fact that they've utilized the wreckage deco more so and that they've done a nod to Sabretooth as a character. And because they have, yeah, like they've kind of subdued it a little bit more, I think with the in, the inclusion of the steel core helmet as a, you know, they're using that as like, the, that's the kind of driver helmet, isn't it, basically? Uh, the Ninja Turtle helmet, we should call it, because it's so, it does make them look it like Ninja like Turtles. Turtle, yeah. uh, which is amazing. Um, this is Leonardo, I think. This is a yellow-skinned Leonardo uh, head um, helmet. But like, I, I think by making it sort of like an, an army builder, you can th he's 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 less outlandish and more generic, I would say, because of that. So I don't know. I think the I think it's cool. I think he looks cool, and I quite I quite like the fact they went with black because it's like I don't know. Again, it's quite it's like a cool look and a cool vibe. Um, but I totally understand why you're not into it. Totally understand why I'm not mad. I actually had a feeling when it first dropped, I'm like, oh yeah, I don't think Pat will like that because it's not like the more orangey brown balaclava, the yellow stripes, the the dark green. Would you have would you have been more on board with um like a more subdued saber tooth deco? Or would you want full on bright as you can like not bright but as as, as it is on that no, saber tooth i, I get it i mean you want things to match with the with the current style so yeah i think i would have been a little more on board with a more saber tooth style rather than this is just i mean they do this with night force as well just making everything black rather than paying attention to the fact that night force originally was not just all black action figures and mm. we're kind of there now with um with Tiger Force as well, and that's just weird. Um, but the yeah. but it's the stripes really that are getting me the most, because I wreckage obviously was was black before, but somebody had to have made a decision, looked at it and said, yeah, that's that's too much yellow, and maybe they felt that it was too much yellow once they put it on the vehicle. Yeah, possibly, possibly. Um, I think it could have been. I think it could have been um, more. Or it could have been more like that kind of yeah. I mean, they've used a kind of like a copper orange almost to the orange parts. Mm -hmm. I don't see why they couldn't have used a, a more subdued yellow, like a mustard or like a, um, you know, like the yellow. Even look at the yellow on Bazooka's pants, like that. You know, it's not like crazy bright. Um, yeah. So I, I yeah, I get what you're saying on that one, mate. I think I would have preferred yellow stripes minimum, um, honestly. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I I don't know. I, I still think he looks cool. I still think it looks pretty dope, and I really like what they did with the with the deco on the face mask. I thought that was kind of fun. Like when the images first started coming out, it was like, is that just like a black blob on his face? But then when you get a nice close up of it, it's actually no, it's a broken down sort of like uh, pattern saber tooth sort of shape thing, which is kind of fun. Um, and th there we go. There's your there's your Leonardo. I said Leonardo because it's kind of like that chromy blue color. And it shows um, how many foot soldiers he's taken out in the top. <laughs> it should be little, little feet, little feet, little yeah. feet over the top. Oh, That's so fucking good, mate. That is so. I did a swear word. Sorry, that's going to demonetize us. Um... <laughs> well, it's my last episode anyway. Yeah, right? it's your last episode anyway. Let's go out with a bang. Let's see how many f word bombs we can drop in this episode. Somebody's going to tune in, in the middle and think it actually is my last episode. It is yeah, not. Yeah, it's last not. Episode. He's he's not really going here. That was me just being an idiot. Um, but yeah, I, I, I love the fact they put the mouth on it again. I was almost in a, in a, I didn't even think about them including a helmet because we knew this figure was coming, but I just thought it was going to be wreckage on a tiger paw. I didn't realize they were going to throw a steel core helmet in. And I should have realized that because we just got one with night force shockwave. 
So it should have been like one of those things where you go, it's probably going to happen on here. Um, but because of that, I was thinking after the fact, um, I if they hadn't put the mouth on the helmet, I'd have been so confused after v Clutch got the mouth on the helmet. So I'd have been like, mouth on the helmet. I've said that a few times already. I don't know. That sounds gross. But you know what I mean. And um, yeah. Um, so I'm glad that they went with the with the mouth. What we haven't talked about is how nice the tiger paw looks like. Looks. We'll get there. We've just got to talk about his ass no, first. We've got to talk right. about the back of the figure. Which... Yep. There you go. So yeah. take take me through your thoughts, Pat, on his butt. Just kidding. Uh, here's the tiger paw. How beautiful is that? Yeah. Um, I, I think even more from the side, it looks good. But you can have those <laughs> for a few images. There you so. go. There you go. There it is. Yeah. Gorgeous. Um, it's a really nice phase from white through it to... Is. Yeah, yeah. It, it really does look nice. Um, that, that to me, is the main selling point of this. And I kind of feel opposite this than I did for the Ram cycle, where it was like, where did they put the mouth on that thing? It just didn't look right to me at all. Um, mouth maybe is on also... the top. There you go. Right. Yeah, yeah. This just it just looks a lot better. That's kind of how it it was. And I, I don't know. It is something about the stripes. It just looks good. I like Absolutely. it. Uh, massive shout out to Zartan for the super chat. Appreciate it, bud. Meanwhile, I'm still waiting for a proper ride. Indeed. Yeah, well, that's yeah. true, actually. We don't have a swamp skier. We don't have a motorcycle for him to, to utilize. We don't yeah. have a, a, we don't have a uh, swamp fire. We don't have any ground assaults. We don't have any air assaults. What's going on, Pat? Should there should be loads of dreadnought vehicles now by now, shouldn't there? Not loads, but at least <laughs> one minimum one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you, Zartan. We really appreciate that. I think people think I'm Zartan and I'm just sending money to myself or something, but I have no idea who that is. So it must be the actual real Zartan, genuinely. Uh, but thank you very much, mate. I really appreciate it. Well, if you were uh, Zartan, you'd at least know who Zarana was, but. Serana, I didn't know it was you. See, exactly. I would have known that, and I don't because I say that all the time. Um, yeah, I I'm with you on the tiger paw, mate. Tiger paw is phenomenal, and and the ferret's phenomenal in general. Like it's a great like version of the ferret, and so the, the tiger paw was gonna all the tiger paw had to do, in my opinion, was get the deco right, and it's got the deco right. So I'm I'm cool with that. Um, surprised they went two tone with the gun, though. Like I thought they would have just yeah. full on kept that that red color all the way through. Yeah. Um, I, again, I think that that's to have less bright colors on things. Differentiation as well. So yeah, I think the sure. ferret one's all red, isn't it? So yeah, that kind of makes some sense. Not that it makes it, it doesn't makes it doesn't matter if you switch the guns around. If they're the same color, who cares at the end of the day? Um, I think this and the Cobra version is awesome, says Justin. Uh, Tonka wheels, says Christoph. Absolutely. They are huge wheels. Does the gun swap sides? Yeah, it can actually clip onto any part of that railing. So if there's a, if there's a straight element of the railing, it can clip onto it. If there's an open space enough for it to fit, it will clip on in any way, shape, or form you want it to. Um, the real Zartan doesn't know who Zartan is, says Same Time Toys. Indeed. Um, yeah, there you go. Cool. Oh, that's a good point, yeah. There you go. And then th this is fun because I I think the, the box art here is gorgeous. Um, I really like this depiction of what I assume is some sort of Southeast Asian, maybe Vietnamese village, um, maybe straight out of the uh, Sunbow episode, Let's Play Soldier, which was where my mind went immediately. Also kind of looks like the, 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 the kind of setting in the movie where Beachhead is training law and order in the yeah. montage thing yeah so that would make sense if this is a training area and he's been doing training there you go i, I didn't even I, I wasn't even going there pat but again this is why you're here last episode by the way i just put just... together the two things you already said is all i did i wasn't remembering any of that <laughs> the file card or the fact that this looks similar to the training area of the movie both of those things were you if you look really close you can see Rakondo's rifle on the deck of, i'm just kidding you can't um that would have been amazing though wouldn't it that would have been like yeah. the that would have been someone being absolutely so tuned in to the gi joe community and fandom yeah uh more so than any of us would ever be 
Um, I've got to, I've got to say that I really like this. I like the vibe, and I also will point out that in the background you can see Roadblock and Tripwire on all also on Tiger Paws. So buy three. Yep. Make sure you buy three. What was funny though, Pat? I think there was a three limit on them. Hmm. On on the website. So not only are they saying there's a limit of three, but they're also showing three on the box art. That has to be a subconscious, subliminal sort of buy three of them, guys. Doesn't it? Yeah. Probably. I bet they think about that. I bet they there's do. More than three Tiger Force figures though already. So, I so mean, you need one for this, each. So. Yeah, you yeah. need one for each, definitely. Uh so that would be yeah, you need 70 of these guys um, for all the Tiger Force figures. Amazing. Um, then, of course, the back, which highlights some of the aspects of the Tiger Force logo on his uh, on his shoulder. I'm, I'm here for Tampos, by the way, and the more of those, the merrier. Um, it would have been nice to see him get like his own special patch um, in much the same way Wolf Spider's been given his own patch. It would have been nice to have some sort of like demolitions sort of patch would be kind of cool, but Tiger Force is awesome. I'm down for that. Um, also, Pat, I this stands to reason in the same way that you have actually pointed out in the past that it stands to reason for Wolf Spider that the existence of a Tiger Force wreckage would insinuate the existence of a standard Deco wreckage, which wouldn't be Firefly. So, what? Where does your mind go for a standard Deco wreckage? And don't say Sabretooth Deco because that's ridiculous. No, I, I no. <laughs> I I thought about trying to put one of those together before using various Firefly figures. I even kind of mixed up some parts of like the red Firefly with um, with like the the Arctic white Firefly. Oh, and then, then it started to look like he was like this medical person. Yeah, it was just like well, maybe he goes in and uh, <laughs> demolitions, medic medical demolitions. <laughs> <laughs> blows things up after he helps people <laughs> you know like if there's a vehicle that needs to be destroyed so it doesn't fall into enemies hands yeah he's gonna save the people inside and blow up the vehicle i it's like very it specific specific very as specific. hell yeah i love it i love it yeah the red and white sounds kind of interesting though uh, especially when you consider yeah those previous versions of firefly that you could kind of yeah draw i don't know i think that i think that that would be a great thing whenever you have creative people on the brand Ooh. to come up with just a nice set of colors that work well together and put them on a figure. What about, um, what about, again, as an homage to Sabretooth, uh, a green deco so that you go from like the, this black and this kind of brown kind of like overall with the orange and you go with something that is like more military sort of vibe with green to homage that that original deco and maybe rather than the orange elements you have that yellow incorporated into it and then instead of the and then maybe i don't know what you'd do for the for the secondaries and stuff but maybe something like that maybe i, th I think that if i were to uh really get into it and try to figure out what colors i would use i'd probably try to figure out what year he probably would have been in which would have maybe been... Um, oh, yeah, 88. No, 87, maybe 86? Yeah, something like that. Maybe treat it as like a mail-in in my mind and look at the various colors that are already available in the line because they would reuse yep. hand tones. Yep. And then uh, I also would probably try to, to separate the color of the pants from the color of the shirt. Yes. So that so that it looked that much more uh, yes I like that similar to Firefly, and also you could probably remove some of the camo elements so you could just go with a green right. shirt right and then I would the pants or remove the camo elements yeah yeah and then the pants could be like yeah like a brown or something else or another color that that yeah complements it like yeah. a tan maybe that'd be so cool actually and then the balaclava could match the pants or match the right. gloves and boots or whatever yep. it could be yeah that's I'm with you on that mate. I'm with you on that a lot. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, that's that's the back thing. Then I took a, a close-up of the backpack just to see if there were any um like other elements, but it just seems like a, a you know, again, some nice deco hits, and then they've got that little tampo on there, which is really cool as well on the original. I say the original, the version 2.0 Firefly. Um, and then this again, I like I like showing shots from the back, the booty shots. Uh now we're getting a booty shot of the tiger paw. 
this is this is a dope vehicle. I'm not even. I'm I'm well into this. I'm so glad they made it as big as they did, um, and still kept it in that price point of trouble bubbles and rams and stuff like that. Because I thought this was going to be about ten bucks more expensive. When I saw the size of it, I was like, oh, this is this is huge. That it's going to be much more expensive. So I was very shocked when it came in at fifty four ninety nine. Happily, of course. Yeah. But I'm so happy they made the wheels so big, mate. Yeah, I'm. I'm still. It's still weird to me that the standard versions of vehicles are the ones that are being the Pulse exclusives. Flight, Flight Pod, uh, Ferret, Vamp. It, it's just weird to me. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, I guess. Um, th oh, this is a Target exclusive. Don't forget. But the Ferret, you're right, is a Pulse exclusive. 100%. Correct. Yeah. So yeah. you were just talking about the construction when you first saw the size of the vehicle. So my yeah, mind yeah. is on the on the standard version. Yeah. No, that is that is quite interesting. I think they're doing that because it's like, actually, yeah. I sp there is a there must be a reason for that, and I think it's probably because of the the fact that there must be a logistical reason as well. Like a that must be easier for them internally. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. I'm not to ask them that question. Actually, that's a very good point. Um, oh, oh. Mark says, actually, that's a good point. I don't think there is a storage compartment on this, is there? Uh, because you've got that rack on the back. Maybe that's acting as the storage compartment, Mark. But yeah, the original three and three quarter ferret, there was a storage compartment. Not here, yeah. question mark. I don't know, actually. Um, let me have a look at other images of it. <laughs> well, from underneath, you might be able to see. There. So there, there is that section in the back. I wonder if that does no. clip off. But then no. again, I don't think it does, does it? Probably not. We'd have seen that with the ferret, surely. We'd have seen them images of them opening it if it was a, it was, it was a feature. It probably would be listed as a feature in the back of the box. I have. That's funny that that is such an obvious thing that Mark has pointed out there. I have not given it a thought since this came out in ferret size in in the ferret version so that is yeah no junk in the trunk indeed indeed um anyway here is wreckage but pat hates him so we'll move on i'm just kidding i'm just kidding he doesn't like him he doesn't not he doesn't hate him he doesn't like him um but anyway we've got yeah in standing in the in the woods great shots from uh from matt and shooting the galaxy again i've got to admit though uh showing off that pattern on the face and of course the uh the tampo as well and the pistol Surprisingly, with no silencer, though, so uh, that's quite funny. Or suppressor. Um, Gridiron will fix that, says Chris G. I wonder how they would fix that, though, because they'd have to make something that goes on the back of it as well as what's already there. So I don't, yeah, I'm not sure how they would fix that necessarily. Um, <laughs> Mark's military specialty would be pointing out the obvious. I like it. What, uh, Sherlock. Oh, there is already a Sherlock in there, though, isn't there, Mark? So who, what would your code name be based on that military specialty? Pat's is... What would yours be, Pat? What's your... What's your well, it feels like we're, we're talking uh, mask helmets again, aren't no, we? No, you've got your mask one. That's separate. What's your G.I. Joe code name? My G.I. Joe code name? Oh, yeah. I, I can't pick that. That's that's big. Well, I guess maybe it'd be the one assigned to me back in 2003. Here we go. It was what is Danger it? Watchmen. What the heck does that even mean? That's that's actually quite banging. I like that. Danger Watchman. That's what it was. I didn't pick it. It was if you remember the reservist figure would yeah. come with a randomized file card and everybody yeah. got a different code name just randomly assigned to them. And I got Danger Watchman. I got fire links when they were doing the uh fan club ones, and I kept that forever and I loved it. I'm surprised I'm not fire links on my handles and everything. I should be. But um uh yeah, my producer um name got attached to all of those things. But no, I yeah, fire links is dope and I was really into that. And the funny thing is, a lot of people that did the same thing and got the 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 uh the names, you know, in the UK got the names associated to them, they're all very similar. It's like it's like a thing plus animal. <laughs> Everyone's the same. It's like fire elephant. <laughs> like things that it's just so funny. It's like it's so obvious that they were just taking like two word structures and just it, it, just hilarious. 
Um, Christoph got Christoph says doppelganger. That's actually quite good. Is that is that Pat's? Would that be Pat's? Everyone's saying nitpick. Um, my code name would be sh sh I'm not right. I'm not even read that one out. I nearly nitpick, said it. Nitpick though is my is my mask helmet name. Yeah. Uh, Mark says Tim mask. is nitpick. So Tim could be nitpick for his GI Joe for name. Pat's yeah, is his mask. You got to reuse trademarks. Power Fister. That's a great name, Zora. <laughs> Terrible as well. Um, yeah, I, I always used to love the fact that um, that uh, Fisto was a character in Master of the Universe. I always used to find that so funny. Um, and the fact that he had just a massive fist as well. Speaking of hands, uh, this figure kind of, this picture kind of shows off why uh, this would be the first saber tooth or wreckage to wear gloves, because these would not have looked right if they had just painted them flesh tone, it would have been like, why are his knuckles so huge? <laughs> he's got he's had special knuckle implants for uh demolitions that he's been doing. Yeah, it makes it makes sense that he's got gloves on, definitely. Yeah. Um Jeffrey says, I thought his code name was Naked HD. Uh that's a different code name for a different thing, uh, unfortunately. Right. Um anyway, let me know in the comments, guys, what your code names were given given code names by either the gi joe us or other foreign fan club um situations if indeed that happened for you because like i said mine was firelinks and pat's was danger, danger watchman. watchman which yeah. is amazing actually just sounds like a car a, a comic from like the silver age doesn't it like you're a Marvel Silver Age comic character. It does. And whenever I say it, I feel almost like I'm giving out a password. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I shouldn't tell people what this is. Uppercase D, A, N, G, 3, lowercase. Yeah, that's hilarious. Um, Barking Fridge, my steel brigade was unmerciful justice. That's banging. <laughs> that's a great name. Um. For my real Spanish class uh, class name was El Queso Grande. Interesting. I like it. Um, let us know in the comments, guys, what your actual G.I. Joe and Action Force code names were, please, and thank you. Uh, you we may we may actually I may actually be in luck because I'm gonna have to leave for work, and that's before uh before we get on to the next thing. Okay, we're we're in luck. Here we go, look. No. Now there was a bit of an issue that Emily did um specify that. In the future, they will the, it will aim to go a bit smoother than this particular drop did because obviously targets didn't go up for ages and everyone was kind of very confused about that. So uh, she did acknowledge it, she did apologize, and uh, they'll be working harder in the future to make sure that is a smoother process. And to be honest, we haven't had one of these for a while. We haven't had a terrible pre-order drop sort of situation for a long time. So you know, give them a break. It does. It's not that big a deal. And there will be more going up soon. Don't have you have no fear. Um, anyway, these target exclusives have been showing up at brick and mortar pretty easily too. Absolutely, that, that, very true. Actually, very true. Um, right. So I just moved Tri Tiger Force Wreckage and the Tiger Paw over to the green section. So no further updates on this page. And Bosch. And during the week, I think it was during the week, I revealed that Dinosaur Neil was the next uh, revealed code word to be added to the list of 2025. So TT Dinosaur Neil, which we believe is Pulse exclusive based on the TT designation, there you go. Everything else, like I said, unchanged at this moment in time. Selfie series listings, we're still there. We don't. We think planned and can, so whatever. Uh, <laughs> and that's all I'm saying about that. We already know all the name only reveals currently. I'm doing Let's Talk Classified videos. I've just finished Frag Viper, so I'm starting on Blowtorch. We'll be doing Blowtorch maybe this this week, and then Road Pig and Once Man Cobra Commander will follow after that. Digital renders. Now, we uh, again, this week, I promise you this week, we'll get that Hasbro interview done. It's been really difficult getting Emily, Lenny, and Tony in, in, you know, and myself available at the same time. So we will try and sort that very quickly. Um, hopefully, we'll get some info on the Dragonfly figures, and hopefully, they'll better show us on the actual uh interview as well um and then other than that we've got the unofficial leaks section which again unchanged no point going into it we know the situation there you go pat was that quick enough yeah that was good nice one 
Uh, let's do shout outs and move it on. Have you tried Hoarder yet? No? Well, you need to. If you have a collection of things and want to create a fun and easy way of organising it and, of course, showing it off, then get involved. You can post items and build collections and you can drop a status like getting a fun delivery or seeing some awesome related stuff on your travels. Build your collections with Hoarder. The app is free to download on Google Play and the App Store, so what are you waiting for? Get to hoarding. Mark says, it feels like things haven't been selling out as fast for a long while. Last one's Eels, Big Ben, Range Viper, most recent ones I can think of. You've missed one there, mate. The Vamp sold out. Um, so, yeah, that was probably the most recent one uh, that happened. Um, how about the Brian Hickey interview? Yeah, that's going to be happening this week as well. Or, sorry, this coming work week, Monday onwards. We'll be doing that with Brian at some point in the week. Yes, 100%. Um, now, shout outs, buddy. Go for it. Shout out to Philip. Uh, we were just chatting last night. It's always nice to talk to Philip. Always. And uh, yeah, big shout out to Articulated Points. Any videos on the horizon, my man? Um, we, you know, we tried to do one, one once a month. I, we don't have any, we didn't, we didn't solidify plans yet for this month. We both kind of have an idea and, and hopefully one of us gets that done in two weeks. <laughs> Fingers crossed. There you go. Um, awesome. Yeah, big shout out to Phil. And of course to you, Pat. Uh, I had to do this on my own last week and just shout you two out like I was some sort of like fanboy, which is always the case when I'm on my own on these ones. Shout out to Kate and Phoebes and the whole family in the UK and the US, of course, as per usual. Um, yeah, enjoying the gonna enjoy a long weekend this weekend. Can't wait. Um, and to Brian Sauer for the amazing graphics. We love what you do, Brian. Thank you very much, my man. And of course, in relation to Brian, he runs Codename Iowa, who put on Assembly Required, which is the uh, Iowa Giorgio Convention in Des Moines, the 13th annual, which happens in November on the 8th and 9th of 2024. And Armour 4 is coming very soon, as well. Operation Armour is coming, which is the online version of that in June of 2024. And of course, Pat is going to be involved in that one. Um, cannot wait to see what that is all about, definitely. And um what else have i got oh yes okay some big news coming up so we'll start off with firstly with uh, these beautiful images that brian hickey's been posting for total toy books of uh skeletron and the uh vintage robo skull in the background there but again a very awesome shot and he's been posting a few of these and they look phenomenal so shout out to brian and like i said we'll be interviewing him this week have no fear about that also skeletron will be um will be at joe fest this year um in june and of course they will have their their, their team um there to uh you know show off all their wares um now the big news that we've got to give up today is that as well as skeletron joining joe fest it's not gonna i'm not going by the way i have to i'll put that out now <laughs> i can't go and i'm really sorry but pat will be there so don't worry about it now the big news is that someone else is going to be at Joe Fest this year. And that someone is, you've probably already guessed it, it's Bob Breakin, Palatoy design legend. Bob is going to be at Joe Fest this year. And I am very, well, I'm very upset that I can't be there to hang out and chat with Bob and all that kind of stuff. But very excited that Bob can do this event and basically get loads of people coming up to him and telling him how amazing and awesome he is, which I imagine is what's going to happen. Um, now, I will say there's a little bit of copy to read out here. These will be going out on uh, the socials um, uh, later after this episode as well. But Skeletron is over the moon to announce that Palatoy legend Bob Breakin will be attending Joe Fest in June. Bob worked on Palatoy toy lines in the UK from 1967 until 1984, and as chief designer, was responsible for Action Man, Action Force, and so many other iconic toys. Bob much later joined the Skeletron design team to develop the upcoming and highly anticipated RoboSkull Mark II. He also very recently authored My Palatoy Story in collaboration with Brian Hickey to celebrate the creativity, ingenuity, and vision of his Palatoy team. Please join us in welcoming Bob, who will be traveling all the way from the UK from Aug uh, to Augusta, or accompanied by his son, Robert. Joe Fest 2024 is going to be a truly unforgettable experience. There you go. I'm very excited. Are you excited for this one, Pat? Yeah, actually, what I was doing last week was helping prep the uh, toy department booth stuff for Joe Fest. So, awesome. Yeah, there's always a lot of build up to um, 
to con toy conventions. And uh, uh, yeah, I didn't know about this until you told me about it this morning. It's <laughs> yeah, it's brand new. That's why we're breaking the yeah. news on this one, baby. Yeah, so uh, this is exciting. Yeah, I'm almost nervous to to uh, get the chance to meet him, and and sad that you won't be there because oh, no. I I would like you to be there. I know. I just um yeah, it's just one of those things, and it uh it would have been it would have been perfect. What a great time and everything. Uh, I'm just gonna have to make it up to him by flying out to the UK and hanging out with just going over his house and just hanging out with him there. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Uh, really excited for Bob though, and really excited for everyone to meet him. Bob's amazing, and you'll you'll love him. He's great. Um, okay, now as well, obviously lots of good news this week as well, but also a bit of sad news as well. Um, Larry posted this the other day. Uh, Larry Harmer, um, Trina Robbins passed away uh, in the week. Now Trina was um, pretty much like a very pivotal, important person in the world of women in comics. Um, she was one of the first female artists in the underground comics movement. And she worked on all sorts of different things, but including like Vampirella, Wonder Woman, et cetera, et cetera. She did a lot of kind of work for, you know, and, and a lot of very important trailblazing work for women in comics. So really sad to hear that she passed away. And of course, the fact that Larry posted this, I was also quite like, I just wanted to, you know, call out and, and, and also kind of give her a shout out for all the amazing work she did. Yeah, in that kind of um, in that industry, so uh, just wanted to kind of make sure that we were, you know, paying tribute to a very important person in the world of comics. There, uh, Trina Robbins, rest in peace. Uh, unfortunately, as well, there was more. And uh, Jeffrey uh, Varegi, who was a very very talented artist who had worked on the GI Joe brand as well multiple times, including um, of the covers you can see on screen at the moment for the uh, Trav the Karen Travis run. And of course, uh, the wonderful, I, I still think this is amazing artwork for the spirit classified figure as well. Um, he'd been in hospital for so long, like I think almost three years, I think, with, I think it was lupus and uh, unfortunately passed away from a heart attack. His wife posted on Facebook the other day. So our, honestly, our condolences, our, our thoughts are with the families of uh, both Trina and um, and Jeffrey um, this week. Terrible news. And so it's crap to have anyone pass away, but to have like two in a week that are sort of very, you know, influential to our, you know, uh, our interests, Pat, it's always hard, isn't it, mate? Yeah, this is awful. It, it's just awful. I mean, it, it stinks that it almost feels like this is a a regular thing now too, like that we're just losing people. And I don't know. It, it does make me want to make sure that I, I um, talk with more people whenever yeah. I, I get to a convention. Absolutely. Um, no, it's a, it's a really good point. Like, you know, yeah, I, I, I'm with you 100% on that. Um, it's like kind of make the most of every single moment in it kind of thing. And not to get too, you know, <laughs> sad as we, as we have. Well, I mean, you can't help it, but it's obviously a really, really sucky situation. Um, anyway. Uh, like I said, our thoughts are with uh, the families and friends of um, uh, Trina Robbins and Jeffrey Varegi. And uh, yeah, that's all we can really do, unfortunately. Um, now, we're going to end it on a high note, though, and that is uh, another Kickley um, kind of like, uh, what do we call it, Pat? The Kickley Gallery, I think we call it. Only the one this week, so he's really, he's really slacking on this one this week. <laughs> but it's a good one, and it's rock and roll uh, attacking some snake armor. Uh, what are your thoughts on this one, bud, before we go? I had all these toys as a kid, so he's just, it's like we're just playing with toys from my childhood, so I love it. Yeah, the, the, and they should sign them off uh, for Pat, really, every single time, I think. Uh, anyway, yeah, great work, Kickley. Keep up the good work, my, my good man. Now, that's it. We've reached the end. Boom. We got through it, mate. Um, that's it. Stay fresh cheese bags, all that good stuff. <laughs> Loads more to come. Thank you, mate, for jumping on. I really appreciate it, as always. Yeah, I always love being here. Awesome. We'll be back next week, of course. Uh, and, of course, in the week, there'll be another, I think I did a close to 10 hours of streaming this week. That's ridiculous. Um, I, I'm not sure if I can do that again, but we'll try. Uh, we've got Intel coming up. We've got a uh, Brian Hickey interview. We've got Hasbro interview. We've got all sorts coming. Um, very excited for all of the stuff this week. It's going to be busy. Stay fresh cheese bags. And as always, you know what to do. After three, one, two, three, four.
full force. force. Just in case you forgot what we have to do. Make sure you get involved with the discussion by liking, sharing and commenting on these videos and as always you can keep up with the show after listening by following on X, formerly Twitter, at The Full Force, liking the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash The Full Force. We've also added a brand new Instagram so check us out there as well at The Full Force Podcast and if you would like to contact the show you can message us on any of those platforms with feedback and questions. We also have a Patreon page so if you want to show your support for the show, see your name up in lights on these videos or or enjoy exclusive bonus content then check out patreon.com forward slash the full force podcast or click on the link on any of the posts this podcast appears in full force